Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Streamline podcast. Now, I've been doing this a lot this year and the response has been phenomenal. So, did I say phenomenal? Yeah, that was right. So, what I've been doing is taking presentations or guest appearances, interviews on other podcasts and uploading them here as part of this podcast in a way to share more conversations with you, but also to highlight other podcasters and other people that are putting out incredible information um, in a way to hopefully help you to discover them and hopefully follow them as well. So this episode is no exception. I had the pleasure of speaking in Austin, Texas at the CD Baby DIY Musician Conference and they gave me permission to share the entire presentation in full. So there is a video version of this on my YouTube channel, or if you're listening to the podcast in Spotify on your device, you can tap the icon in the usually in the bottom left corner and you can watch the presentation as well while you're listening. Anyway, that's enough for me. Let's dive into this. This is my presentation recorded live in Austin, Texas at the CD Baby DIY Musician Conference. Enjoy. Check, check. Check, check. Hey, everyone. Apparently, I'm doing my own intro today. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that, but also terrified because I don't really like to hype myself up. So, uh, you know, if everyone could just welcome to the stage, Mike Warner. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Appreciate the intro. <laughs> but seriously, it's been a while. How many years? It's been a few years, right? We were here 2019 last time in person. So welcome back, officially. It's really good to be back in person. It's been a long time. It's been a long time coming, and it's... So nice to see so many people here once again. And obviously, this is also being broadcast for people watching at home as well. So thank you for tuning in wherever you are in the world. Uh, let's get straight into this. That's a great shot, isn't it? Yes. Um, so quick overview. In this presentation, I'm going to do... I have 100 slides and I have 45 minutes and Q&A. So I'm going to go fast. This will be available to watch later. I do have a PDF with all of the links of things I mentioned, so you don't need to try and keep up and scramble and write notes. You can just scan the QR code at the end and grab the PDF directly if you want. Uh, but let's do a quick overview just about me for anyone that's not familiar with what I do, what I've done, and why I'm here today. So I started out as a DJ at a young age, really enjoyed playing local bars and venues in my hometown in Adelaide, Australia. Oh, you're going to make some noise for that? <laughs> so I'm not just proud of my hometown, but I actually have my mum, dad and sister here in the front. They've flown all the way here from Australia. Oh, you don't want to get up? I had seats for you. Okay. So, you know, we're talking pressure, like 40 years of hearing me talk, and they fly over here to hear me talk again. Um, back to Adelaide, South Australia. I now live in California, but I got tired of just playing the same venues. I wanted to perform around the country, got into music production, started collaborating with producers that were much better than me. Uh, I still have a group now that you can see on the screen. We go by the name of Date Night. And it's myself and two friends back in Australia. That was our debut show at a venue in Brisbane, Australia called Prohibition. Obviously, uh, that was in 2016. And after that, we went independent. And so we had to do everything ourselves. We didn't have anyone else on our team. So when I moved here to the United States, I spent a lot of time learning about all of the different things relating to streaming all of these tools we have access to and how they can help as an independent artist. Uh, what happened as a result was that I went from playing on stages to being this guy that just talks a lot now. And, you know, I realized that I actually enjoy this more. Um, I enjoy the early nights. I enjoy not living out of a suitcase as much. And I enjoy just putting out all of this information that I've learned over the years to help other artists. 
And as a result of that, that led to me writing a book, Work Hard, Playlist Hard. And the second edition actually came out last year in August, and the audio book came out this year. Uh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not here to hustle the book. Like, if anyone is interested, there's one shameless plug right there. Uh, that's what it looks like. That's my head exploding uh, from, from knowledge, not from stress or anything else. Uh, but let's get into this presentation. So this is interesting. I spoke at Indie Week recently, and I put this poll up before I started. And I just said, hey, you know, out of all the streaming platforms you're aware of, which ones can you pitch music to directly? And I found it interesting that, you know, obviously a pretty large amount said Spotify, but when we got down to some of these other ones, you know, zero for Angami, and we'll get to what Angami is if anyone isn't familiar, um, but platforms such as Amazon Music and Deezer, where there are actually official pitch forms available. So, I've kind of added that into this presentation. Some of you may be aware of them, but I will also cover a lot of points as to why these forms are important, and it's not just getting on a playlist. Um, and then this one here is just a few numbers relating to date night and a few things that we've managed to achieve over the years as an independent group. So we started in September 2015. Uh, these numbers are obviously need a little bit of updating, but. Some of the key ones in here that I find interesting is that Spotify algorithmic playlists have actually delivered more streams than Spotify editorial playlists. And to give you an idea, 1.1 million of those streams come from Discover Weekly alone. So we've actually had more streams from Discover Weekly than from any other playlist that is curated by someone at Spotify or by a user or a third party playlist curator. And on the right-hand side, that's um, one of our goals. We always said we would love to take over a corner in Times Square and have a billboard. And so we actually used our own money from streaming and treated ourselves to that because we realized no one else is going to give us that. So um, now let's get into the A's when I realize we have... Yes, let's go fast. Amazon Music. So Amazon Music, they actually have two different websites for artists. There's artists.amazon.com, which is where you sign up, you claim your artist profile, and you do all of the things that I'll tell you about. The other one is just an information site, which is artists.amazonmusic.com, adding music in there. And that will tell you all of this extra information, kind of like a blog, if you will. But the first one I wanted to share was this is the Twitch integration with Amazon Music. So if you go live on Twitch and you've signed up with Amazon Music for Artists, you can connect the two. And what happens is when you go live on Twitch, you will also go live within the Amazon Music app. And I've got an example of what that looks like. So I was sitting at home. I don't have Twitch on my phone. I have Amazon Music. And I got a notification that said one of my favorite artists, Disclosure, is live. I tapped the notification, went into Amazon Music, and I was able to watch their live stream directly within the app. The other good thing about this connection is that there's opportunities to be featured on the homepage. You can see this is the homepage of Amazon Music, and they have an entire section where they highlight when artists are live. Now, not many have actually made this connection, so you have a pretty good opportunity at actually reaching that homepage. And another thing that I found interesting about this is it's not just if you're performing music. There's been times where an artist will be playing a game on Twitch and it will still show from their artist profile within Amazon Music. So you can actually reach fans in Amazon Music when you're doing other things as well. It could be talking, playing games, cooking, painting, whatever it is, you can share that with them. Amazon artist merch pages. So artists have an opportunity to have their own merch page. This example is if you go to amazon.com slash Mary J. Blige. Other ones include amazon.com slash Taylor Swift, amazon.com slash ACDC. Um, anyone can request an invitation to create merch and you go to merch.amazon.com. And then 
in Amazon Music for artists, there's an opportunity to connect the two. And that's where you can move towards having your own artist storefront or artist page on Amazon.com. You can also sell this merch directly on your artist profile in the Amazon Music app, similar to how you can sell merch in Spotify. And you can also sell this on Twitch while you're live streaming as well. Um, as mentioned, all the links for this will be included in the PDF, so I won't bother reading out all the URLs. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on is that Amazon Music do now have editorial pitching. Um, this, like, I'll admit I'm a bit of a nerd with this, so I check the App Store every day to see the updates. And so I actually saw this update when it happened and took a screenshot and immediately just spread the news because that was how I first found out that editorial programming pitching for Amazon Music was now live. And I'm not going to actually run this entire video because it goes for about five minutes, but um, basically the way it looks in Amazon Music for Artists, you've got a new release, you click on the pitch it button, and from there you'll be able to fill out a pitch form the same way you would with Spotify or other streaming platforms. What's interesting about this pitching process with Amazon Music is that they don't bless you. They don't actually mention playlists as much. It's actually more about radio programming and things like that. So with Amazon Music, they have a very strong focus on voice. You know, there's obviously the side where we talk to Alexa and we request music and playlists and things like that. They monitor how many people are requesting by an artist's name, a song title, an album, etc. But there's also the other side of that as well with voice, which is... What is the other side? <laughs> um, yeah, and then there's the other side of that, which I totally blanked on. But um, it happens. It's been a few years. But the editorial playlist pitching, um, yeah, the other side of that is that it will go into radio programming within Amazon. So Amazon, they have stations within the app. might feel similar to Pandora for people that are familiar. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you're tagging the genres, instruments used, gender, location, all of this information relating to the song and the artist so that in Amazon Music it is traveling to the right ears and it's being played to the right people in their radio programming. And they also have a notification. So if you get added to a playlist and you have notifications turned on, you'll get a notification that day directly from the Amazon Music for Artists app on your phone, letting you know that you've been placed on a playlist. Next up, we have Angami and a nice close-up of the shirt. So, show of hands, who here is familiar with Angami? Two. Yeah. So, um, Angami is really not that big here in the US yet. Um, and the reason for that is if you go to sign up and you log in, you won't see much music. It all comes down to licensing. So they're based out of the Middle East. So the way that I first found out about Angami was I had a friend in Dubai and I said, could you log in and just take a look? Let me know if you see this music on Angami. Send me some screenshots. And they did. Um, after that, what I did was I went to my web browser. I went to Incognito and hear me out. You're not going to get in trouble. I opened an incognito web browser, and I typed in Angami and the artist's name, and I was able to get to the artist page and get that link and just see how it looked. I couldn't listen to any music, but I knew it was there. Um, and then what's great is Angami for artists, you could get access anywhere you are in the world. So even though you can't listen to your music on Angami here in the United States, you can still claim your profile, pitch for editorial playlists on there, and have a stronger presence on there for the people that are listening. Because people are going to listen to your music where they choose, whatever their platform of choice is. And Angami have notifications as well if you get added to a playlist. And this is where you go. It's as simple as pitch to playlist pick a song to pitch. Um, 
it's only a few steps. They don't ask for as much information as the other platforms. But I also find that there's not that many people, especially here in the United States, that are actually pitching their music. So as you can see, genre, mood and style, a brief description. Um, one thing I always suggest for this is I just have a document where I have, for any song that I have coming up, I have the mood, genre, brief description, all of that information ready, just copy and paste. Just, I'm trying to stay organized. Um, but the reason why I think it's important is that not enough people are paying attention to it, and I've actually seen a lot of artists have a pretty good strike rate with actually getting on a playlist by doing this with Angami. I mean, arguably the numbers aren't as big as some of the other platforms, but it all adds up and you're still reaching an audience that you weren't reaching before. So signing up for that, it is artists.angami.com and the link for Angami for Artists is in the PDF as well. Apple Music, we're still on the A's. <laughs> okay. It's, I'm not talking any faster, don't worry. So Apple Music, this example here, obviously I recorded my screen last year. This is Alicia Keys had an upcoming album, Keys, on December 10th. Uh, this is showing you what it looks like when an album is set up for pre-ad on Apple Music. Um, you know, some people may be familiar with pre-save on Spotify and things like that as well. But the way that I've done this with my own music is after uploading to the distributor, I would then go in and I would say, I would like to make a few of these songs available as instant grat tracks or instant gratification tracks. And so what this looks like is in iTunes, people can purchase an album before it comes out, get some songs available as an instant download. That also now translates over to Apple Music. So they can stream those songs prior to the album release, add the album to their library, and as soon as that album is released, they will get a notification on their device and they can listen to all of the songs. So it's, I really like this because it doesn't require any third party tool. It doesn't require asking people to log in with multiple social media accounts, add their email. It's just simply in Apple Music, click add and you'll have my album in your library as soon as it comes out and you can even listen to some songs now. And I did mention iTunes on the previous slide. Some people have said to me that you know, they don't think it exists anymore. Uh, this is in the latest music app on a Mac computer. If you go to preferences, you can actually turn the iTunes store on if someone turned that off. Uh, but I definitely recommend still making music available on iTunes. We'll skip that one. Okay, these are Apple Music milestones. And the way that you get these currently is in the Apple Music for Artists app, which is on your mobile phone, tablet, et cetera. And what I really like is I'm not a graphic designer. So they've done the artwork for you. They've identified different milestones. These could be relating to Shazam counts, uh, total number of streams, even chart positions across Apple Music. And the art is created for you. And as you can see right there, is um, just how you do it in the Apple Music for Artists app. So you just simply tap on that image that's been created for you under milestones, and you can share that immediately to social media. They've even given you the text and a link directly to that track as well. And the reason I'd like to share this is because, as far as I know, it's still only available in the app on your mobile device. If you go to artists.apple.com, I haven't seen it there yet. So I feel like it's one of those things that a lot of people have potentially missed. Uh, the other one is Apple actually allow you to create these Twitter audio cards, which is a 30 second, or I should say 29 second preview <laughs> of your track that plays directly within people's Twitter feeds. So while they're scrolling down, they can press play they don't leave Twitter. So they can actually listen to a preview of that track directly in their feed. If they want, they can obviously tap the button below and listen to the song in its entirety. Um, 
One thing that I do, and I suggest all of you do if, if you're interested in making extra money, is I signed up as an Apple affiliate where it's free to do. When you share links, you get paid if someone goes through that link, purchases a product, a subscription from Apple. And so you can actually include your affiliate link in this, which means someone plays your song, they follow that link, they go to Apple Music, they subscribe, you get a bounty of anywhere between 3 and $5, and you get paid however much you get paid for that stream. So, I mean, I'll take, I'll take both, but it's definitely worth doing because it's the same amount of clicks to create it. And if someone's going to go to Apple Music and subscribe after clicking your link, you may as well make some extra money from that as well. We're going to skip that one. Um, I've obviously got it muted, but basically there's a very challenging process where you can create a playlist on Apple Music as an artist. So I created a video, it's on my YouTube channel if anyone wants to watch it later. But essentially, if you wanted to create a playlist that the curator of that playlist is the artist, and if you tap on that artist's name, it goes directly to their profile in Apple Music, there is a way you can do that. And like I said, the videos on my YouTube, obviously that was uh, probably March 2020 when I decided I didn't want hair anymore. Uh, but you can go ahead and watch that on the YouTube channel. Audio Mac. I'm just going to touch on Audio Mac very quickly. Um, I know there's some people from there kicking around who are going to be a lot more helpful than me. But I did just want to mention that um, Audio Mac have now started to roll out Audio Mac for creators. And so there's a couple of little things you need to do before you can get in. It relates to how many songs you've released and things like that. But the word that I've been hearing is that there's different features that you'll be able to apply for once you're part of this program, which will help to get your music in the feed in front of more people. Are we at B yet? Bandcamp. <laughs> We're at B. Perfect. Um, yeah, so real quick one. Um, who here is familiar with Bandcamp? Okay, perfect. So we know what Bandcamp is. We know it's cool. It's another way to sell music directly to your fans. It really picked up during the pandemic when people wanted to own music in case it disappeared from streaming. Um, one thing I wanted to share is that they have a website that is isitbandcampfriday.com. So multiple times per year, Bandcamp do what's called Bandcamp Friday where they don't take any fees at all. So if you pay $10, the artist gets $10 on that day. Um, but yeah, this website, this is actually the current screenshot. So the next one is coming next week, Friday, September 2nd. Um, so yeah, that's just a fun website that they made because so many people were asking about it. And I believe it even started trending on Twitter, which is pretty cool. Uh, Bandcamp also allow you to pitch an upcoming release for a possible editorial feature, not playlists, but essentially it's a blog. And what's great about that is it's public. They will write about it pre-release. You'll have some extra text that you could use when you're filling out these pitch forms that we keep showing. Um, the only thing that you need to be aware of is they need a really high amount of lead time. I've seen some people give 12 weeks just to make sure that they actually have an opportunity to get featured. But if you've got something coming up, once again, link to this page is in the notes, or you can just simply search Bandcamp Daily. Bands in Town and Shazam have an integration. Just wanted to mention this quickly. It's one of those in case you missed it, but essentially when people Shazam your music now, if you've connected it with Bands in Town for artists, it will also show all of your upcoming shows, gigs, events, and if there's something coming in that person's location, they'll be able to see that as well. So one of these things where a few clicks connect the two, you might get a few extra fans that Shazam your song, realize you're performing, and they come to your show as well. Boomplay. So, okay, quick show of hands. Who's heard of Boomplay? Wow, okay. <laughs> oh, Megan, you know everyone. <laughs> you just like doing this the whole time. <laughs> um, 
So Boomplay is an interesting one because, whoa, hang on. Okay, so Boomplay, let me see if I've actually got a screenshot. I don't. So what I like about Boomplay is that makes them unique as a streaming platform is that they actually have a social aspect to it where I wish I had a screenshot, but basically when you go to a playlist, album, artist page, song page, if you're logged in, you can actually leave comments on that page. And so what I've seen on there is artists will actually release a new song and fans are writing comments directly on that song within Boomplay. So while you're listening, you're actually reading and engaging in the comments. And I feel like in a way it's one step closer to what a lot of people have been screaming for, which is direct ways for artists to talk with their fans. Um, so I like the direction they're heading. And once again, Boomplay have their own uh, site for artists, Boomplay for artists. Once again, uh, the link is in the PDF, but essentially right now you can go in there, claim that profile, upload a photo, start commenting, see if people have been saying things about your music and you can respond to them and have a conversation with your fans, your audience on there as well. Okay, this time we're actually up to Deezer. Okay. So I'm going to assume that a few people here are familiar with Deezer. Um, so Deezer's tool is called Deezer for Creators. Um, they have two separate tools. They have one for podcasters and they have one for artists as well. Um, but they have a lot of the usual stuff that you'd be familiar with. How many streams are you getting? Where are they coming from? What playlists are you on? Things like that. Uh, a few unique features they have is they allow you to create a short status update Basically, it's 64 characters, so it's even shorter than a tweet. But artists have been using this to put up maybe a promo code for a pre-sale, encouraging people to visit their Deezer profile to see that. Um, sometimes it's just a quick update. You know, new album will be out this summer, things like that. And this one here is you can highlight. Let me just see if I can get that rolling. The other thing here is Deezer have what's called a highlight. So in Spotify, you have artist pick. In Deezer, they'll always show your latest release at the top of your profile, but they'll also allow you to highlight any other release as well. Um, and it doesn't just have to be music. It could be a podcast or a playlist. So you can actually feature two things up the top of your Deezer artist profile. And you can also choose when they display. So if you have a holiday album you released last year, you could set that now so that it will display this year during that holiday as well. And this one's an interesting one. So Deezer do have a pitch form. It's a Google Doc. It's, um, they don't have anything built into Deezer for creators yet. But what's interesting about this is that it's a pitch form for management, but the first option that you get as you scroll further down is, uh, are, you, are you the artist and the manager, meaning are you self-managed? So this does apply to everyone, basically. Um, this form, they like you to fill it out at least two weeks prior to release. They ask a lot of information, but I can assure you if you get to the end, it's actually worth doing because I know so many people that have just looked at the form, looked at the questions, and just given up. Um, but definitely worth doing. And, of course, you've got the link to that. I'm not going to make you hunt for that. A couple of interesting things about Deezer I wanted to share. This is really unique because all of the editors at Deezer actually have their own public profile. And as you can see, it's got an image of them. It's got their first name. It tells you what they are an editor for. Um, that image may or may not match their LinkedIn profile photo, but you didn't get that from me. And not only that, but it's borderline stalkerish, so be careful how you use this, but they have to make this public, by the way, um, for you to see it. But you can actually see beyond what playlists they curate what they've been listening to. So what albums are they listening to on repeat? What podcasts are they listening to? And there was one artist that actually um, 
tried their luck, did some cold outreach and connected with an editor because they were listening to a gardening podcast. So there are some creative ways that you could use this. Um, obviously, we could do a whole other conversation about outreach and what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Um, I'll leave that up to your discretion. But I just thought this was really cool because if you have an idea of who the person is at the other end and what their interests are, you might change that, the wording in that pitch form to that person as well. Next up is GeoSarvan. So GeoSarvan for artists is now known as Artist One. GeoSarvan have a tool that they provide called Shorties. Uh, a lot of people will say it's similar to Spotify Canvas. Uh, the good thing about this is that it's a looping visual that will play in the app while people are listening to your music. So as we know, you don't get paid for a stream unless people listen for more than 30 seconds. So having a looping visual at least 15 seconds, well, under 15 seconds long, might just help to keep their attention a little bit longer until the song gets to that key part where you hook them. So I always encourage to create these visuals, uh, upload them in multiple apps. We'll get to Spotify in a minute, of course, as well. But for anyone that is not that great with graphic design like me, uh, I use Canva. Uh, Canva's really easy. I can just put an image in, tweak it, set the time, and, you know, I... Obviously, it's easy enough to do from that point on. Otherwise, you can always outsource and find people on different places like Fiverr where they'll create one for you as well. So GeoSarvan let you build two different types of official artist playlists. What's great about this is they handle the branding, they handle the artwork, they handle the description, so they keep it all very clean. Um, and what you have is a private playlist in GeoSarvan and you can have a free account to do this, of course, where it will automatically synchronize every 24 hours and update the artist playlist. So you have full control over the official artist playlist for your own music and what goes into there. The first one is artist hits, which is your own catalog, your own discography, ordered exactly how you would like, including the songs you would like. And the other one is made by where you basically include any songs you like from other artists as well that you would like to highlight. And just to show you, that's what it looks like. Um, obviously, I went and fixed this after. I feel terrible. My friend Sharif got his face kind of <laughs> cut out there. He's a, he's a good sport, though. He really is. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they just, by uploading that image, you've given them permission. They're able to use that. And it's really low maintenance, you know I mean? Most people will just have the one playlist when you release a new track or an album. Just go in there and drop it in. Oh, yeah. And um, as you can see, we are killing it on GeoSarvan at this point. <laughs> one follower, uh, which I believe was me. So you got to start somewhere, though. Pandora. We're up to P. So Pandora... Pandora have over 60 million monthly users in the US. Um, so a lot of people outside of the US don't pay attention to Pandora because it's only based here in the United States, which I think is awesome for anyone that is based here because there's so many opportunities within their, their artist marketing platform, um, featured tracks, voice messages, stories. There's a lot of tools they have for curators, and creators and artists. And so this is a 10 minute love in with Pandora beginning now. But the first thing is Pandora allow you to feature, I hope I get this right, up to six tracks per year, eight weeks per track. So essentially you can have a track featured 48 weeks out of the year. And those tracks can be released within the last 12 months. So if you dropped a track a few months ago, you can still do this. And the only catch is they need to have had 10 spins in the last week. And those 10 spins don't have to come from multiple people. So there's no reason why you can't call it. Only, only to get to 10, okay? 
if Andy's in here right now, he'd, he'd be nodding, so it's, it's cool. Um, but as you can see, you know, this is one example, a solo piano track, featured spins. Uh, we can see that an additional 3,700 spins as a result. With featured tracks, it's a few clicks. It's this track starting on this date, ending on this date, and submit. And there's no additional process beyond that. It will start at that time. Um, if you wanted it to start immediately, they may just check it first and then start it the next day. But I've seen a lot of creative uses for this. One of them, once again, going back to holidays, is there was an artist I know that released a Christmas album. And so what they did was right before Christmas, the year after, they actually went in and made a track from that, a featured track. So it was appropriate for that time of year and it allowed them to give that track an extra opportunity to get heard in Pandora. And, you know, there's obviously, there's always going to be stories where people will tell you they got hundreds of thousands of spins and that. It does happen sometimes, but even if it's just a few hundred or a few thousand, it's new listeners that you weren't going to reach otherwise and it's extra spins on Pandora. So definitely recommend doing featured tracks. And Pandora now has really detailed track reporting. Uh, so this will show you all of the different ways that people are engaging with your music in Pandora. How many streams you're getting, of course, but how many people are giving them a thumbs up? How many people are creating a station on Pandora based on that exact track? So they're saying, play more music like this. Um, how many spins you're getting on other radio stations on Pandora and interactive plays where basically people go directly to that artist and that track and play it as well. So artist audio messages, these allow you to record a message and play it before or after one of your songs plays in Pandora. So you can do it on the right hand side here, you can see that you can do it in the Pandora app if you've got that on your phone. Otherwise, you can do it on your computer and upload those. But as you can see, there's a call to action. So you can actually have a link that shows. So while people are listening, you could say, hey, I'm performing in this city next weekend. Tap the link on your screen now to get tickets. Or we've just released new merch. Tap the link on your screen to check it out. And you can even localize it so it only plays in specific locations. So... If you're playing somewhere in the East Coast, you can limit it to just the East Coast. But these are, these are great because um, people can still opt to have these on or off. So you're only reaching people that are okay hearing audio messages from artists. So this is the other side of Pandora that I really like, which is you can sign up for Pandora Stories, where essentially you can curate playlists and stations within Pandora. This is separate from doing it in the app, where it's user 5726 creates a playlist. You're actually creating it as a brand, a personality, an artist. Um, and they give you a lot of extra tools. They actually show you how many people are listening to your playlist or station how many songs have gotten a spin from that as a result and the average listening time. So this is a mixtape, um, which is another word for station in Pandora's back end that I created. And as you can see at that time, the average minutes per listener was over six hours. So it's safe to assume that out of those 3,200 listeners, they're actually putting this on and playing it all day for a large number of them. And it starts to get even more detailed because for that playlist and station, you can see audience demographics, you can see listening hours by platforms, so you can get an idea of who's listening and what they're listening on, what device. Uh, you can also get regions and they allow you to add search tags and browse tags. And these are really important because with Pandora, um, my friend Ben Harvey, who oversees dance and electronic music programming at Pandora, he told me that there was about 
40% of requests for chill playlists were actually done by voice. So people were actually saying, play a chill playlist or play a chill station. And so when I curated this, it got me thinking, what would people ask for using their voice? You know, play a cafe playlist, play diner music, play Starbucks music. Um, and that really helped with discovery because what I found with Pandora is they don't just put their own stations and playlists up the top in the app. They'll put what they think is best suited for the person based on that request. And this is a fun one that I haven't seen provided by anyone else yet. So when you go deeper into that playlist you curate, you can actually see the complete. Am I saying too much? <laughs> I'm getting censored. Um, you can actually see the completion rate, which means people listen to the song in its entirety, and the skip rate. So how many people skip that song within the first 30 seconds? This is helpful for getting an understanding of if maybe the song isn't as good a fit as you thought it was. Or in one case, going back to the holiday example, um, I sprinkled a few holiday songs into the Cafe Chill playlist. Um, and they went really well. And then it rolled into January. And I noticed this high number of skip rates. And I realized people don't want to be reminded about Christmas in January. Yeah. So. Um, that actually saved me and probably saved me losing a number of people who were listening. Of course. I immediately went in. Yeah, you pretty much drop everything at that point. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, they even break it down by day as well. So, you know, this is how I could see in January there was a large amount of skips on a song. Um, so I, I knew exactly what was happening. And just to mention again, the tool that I just showed you is not in the Pandora app just as a normal user or listener. Uh, it's actually you request access to Pandora stories, which anyone can request access to. Okay, check, check. Yeah, so this is Pandora stories. This is what it looks like when you log in um, so you can get an overview of what you curate. Cobuzz, uh, so a real quick one on Cobuzz. Um, so Cobuzz is like a high fidelity, high quality audio streaming platform. A lot of people who spend crazy amounts of money on speakers in their house will tend to go to something like Cobuzz or Tidal because they want the highest possible audio quality. Uh, this form is so that you can update your artist profile in Cobuzz. It's kind of a manual process right now to get your photo and bio in there. But doing that means that you have a presence in Cobuzz. People find your music and they go, okay, this artist has clearly touched this profile. Maybe I'll follow them and start listening to their music and hopefully find out more about them. Spotify. So we're going to skim over a lot of Spotify in the interest of time. Um, obviously, Spotify for artists is artists.spotify.com, and that's what it looks like. Uh, Spotify Canvas, I'm going to skip over. Uh, but this here, these are what's called Spotify codes. And so it's essentially it's a scannable code that you can print or on artwork or put on digital artwork. In this case, we can see it's on a bus stop or a telephone booth. And it, you can see that people <clears throat> just simply open the Spotify app, tap the magnifying glass, scan that code, and it goes directly to that song, artist, podcast, audiobook, et cetera, within Spotify. And you can create these at spotifycodes.com. It's a separate website, but it is still created by Spotify. For some reason, they just haven't put it into Spotify for artists directly. And let's jump past that. This is another tool that Spotify have created, another tool. These are called promo cards. So promocards.byspotify.com. You can create milestone cards similar to what we saw earlier with Apple Music. Uh, it could highlight a number of followers, a large playlist ad, 
You can customize the background and you can also do these for podcasts and other things as well. But I like these because it's created for you once again. And then you can just go ahead and you can see there's different use cases here. You've got a live show you want to highlight. You've got a new release. You've got a new milestone of followers, or you just simply want to let people know music is on Spotify now as well. But these are all created for you and you can customize the color and you can save them. And this is an interesting one. Um, so I know the album is out now. Um, big fan, by the way. But before the album came out, Beyonce actually was selling a digital download of the song Break My Soul within Spotify. So this was done with the Shopify and Spotify integration. And it allows you to sell almost anything, you know, t-shirts, vinyl, digital download. And I just thought this was really interesting because to me, this says fans still want to own that song. You know, even if it's digital, they still want to know that they've always got access to that. And I mean, I did it myself because I thought this is cool. And it was really interesting because it, there's even a quantity there, you know, so you can just like buy them and gift them. Um, but yeah, this was directly within Spotify without even leaving the app and then buy it now. And then it's handled by Shopify. And just to show you what it looked like on Beyonce's profile, it was right there. Uh, Break My Soul digital single. Simply tap on that and buy we're going to skip past that. Um, just touching on this quickly. So tickets.spotify.com launched recently. It's still in the early stages, but for anyone that's curious to see Spotify diving into the world of direct ticket sales, you can go to that website and take a look and get an idea of the direction they're heading. Um, obviously, they do have their integration with Songkick already where all of your concerts and events from Songkick will show on your artist profile in Spotify. They also send out emails from time to time to fans saying upcoming shows in your city and things like that. And that's just what the live events feed looks like directly in Spotify. I So I don't have much on TikTok in the interest of time. Holy cow. But I just wanted to mention this one. So a lot of people are hungry for a TikTok for artists um, so they can get an understanding of how their music is performing in TikTok, but also how they're performing in TikTok. So this is actually, if you go to tiktok.com slash analytics, when you're logged into your TikTok account, whether you're just on there putting out your own content or whether you have music on there, this is the direction that they're starting to go, which is extremely helpful for understanding what's working on there and what isn't. And YouTube Music, I'm going to skip past that. For anyone that doesn't know, that is what an official artist channel looks like on YouTube. I know CD Baby have a very easy process for connecting the two to claim your official artist channel. Uh, but I wanted to just touch on YouTube Shorts really quickly because they're investing a lot of money into YouTube Shorts and promoting them. And what's great about YouTube Shorts, similar to some other social media apps, is you can upload a video and it will get pushed in the feed to people that aren't subscribing to you. So there's a significant amount of reach that you can get by doing that. And they're now rolling out a new feature where you, if you have, let's say you have an entire concert that you've uploaded to YouTube, people can take a short from that, upload it, and there'll be a link to go and view the entire video on YouTube as well. So there's a lot of opportunities to reach more people at the moment with YouTube shorts, with everything that they're investing into it. So I would encourage you to Download the YouTube app, which is the only way that I know of right now that you can create shorts or the easiest way. Um, and just upload something, you know, even if it's something you've made before, uh, just take a look. You, I think you'll be surprised by how much engagement there is on there. And yeah, that's just how to create a short. Okay. Music. 
Music's match for artists. Very quickly, I wanted to touch on lyrics because lyrics are incredibly important, not just for karaoke sessions at home, but also for people discovering your music. And one thing that always gets people is that you can actually type in part of the lyrics and have them show up in Google as one of the top search results. Um, so adding the lyrics isn't just for people that want to sing along to your song. It's also for people that might be just typing a few words and your song may actually have that in those lyrics. So they could actually discover your song as a result. Um, if you haven't done it, I wouldn't recommend doing it now, but ask that smart voice assistant in your phone to play a song that has the words and then say a phrase and they'll just deliver you that, that song. Um, you know, this is the same except on a larger scale. We're doing it on Google and other apps as well. And what are we at for time? How are we doing, Megan? How many, how many seconds? Okay, that's like 400 seconds. Okay. Um, audio preview start times for your music. So this I wanted to just quickly mention. So when you upload a release to your distributor, one of the questions is usually choose the best part of the audio or where do you want the preview to start from for things like Beatport, iTunes, etc. People preview what they're going to purchase. Um, but beyond that, that start time is also translating over into social media as well. So, you know, one example is, you know, one of the most memorable parts of a song in recent years from Lizzo, from Truth Hurts. And what is really important about this is that if you told people, hey, go to TikTok, choose this audio, scroll to this part exactly, and then use that in your video, you're adding all these extra unnecessary steps. If you just said, here it is, use this in your videos, it's good to go, you're going to have a much better success rate with people including your music in their own content within TikTok Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and everything else that's probably coming out this year. Um, but audio preview start times are just super important because otherwise, you know, if it's a if it's a dance track, you could have a one minute kick drum, and no one's going to scroll through to when the vocal kicks in or when the drop happens. You need to do that for them. Uh, we're gonna. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, look, payola sucks. Um, don't pay to get on a playlist. This is a very extreme example, but um, there's a whole other conversation about it. But essentially, please just, if anyone offers you a guaranteed spot on a playlist, um, don't pay them. You know, ask around, ask to look at the playlist first. This one was one that someone told me, well... This is a similar example of one where someone was really stoked to tell me that their country music song was on a playlist. And I'm like, uh, there's a few things wrong with this. Uh, where do I start? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Notorious B.I.G. was not in the Moana soundtrack. Um, so, yeah, you know, I just kind of leave that one up for fun. And let's see. So... I'm going to do one quick shameless plug because um, I have a course that I just put out. It's on LinkedIn learning. So if anyone is interested, they do a free trial um, so you can burn through it and then cancel that, of course. Uh, but essentially it teaches you a lot of the things relating to editorial pitching where it's a complete walkthrough step-by-step -step, why you should choose this option, why you do this, where you click, it's completely broken down as opposed to just go do this. Um, but it just came out. And for anyone that is interested, when you complete it, you actually get a certification that will show on your LinkedIn profile as well. And you get a nice certificate you can print off and frame if you choose. But that is it for me as I look at the time. I'm just going to leave that up. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so I know with respect to the people that are coming in the room in probably 50 seconds from now, I didn't get to do a Q&A, which I apologize for. But I will say all of my links are on there. I'm really easy to reach. Uh, you can email me. Um, my email is in the PDF that you can grab in there or mike at workhardplaylisthard.com, really easy. Um, but yeah, the QR code just has a link tree with all of the different ways that you can reach me and things I've talked about, the YouTube channel. Oh, really? Okay. Apparently, we have a five-minute Q&A, so that might be one or two questions, but yeah. Yeah, so the question was about uploading a song and how to select the preview start time. So the best time to do this with most distributors is when you're actually uploading the song. There should be an option to set audio preview start time. Um, otherwise, what you need to do and what I've seen a lot of people doing now is going back, reaching out to customer support and saying, this song, this ISRC, I need to change the preview start time to this and include the exact minutes and seconds. Um, but yeah, if possible, doing it when you're uploading the release would be best. But yeah, otherwise, just go in and contact the support team. Yes. Okay, yeah, so relating to the Amazon merch products, how they show on your artist profile, yes, they are also on Amazon.com as well. So there's a few places they will appear. Um, once it's all connected, it will appear on the artist profile in Amazon Music. You can connect it and show it on your Twitch profile. It will also show in Amazon.com. So people that don't have Amazon Music can still search for it, whatever it is, T-shirt, um, things like that uh, so yeah definitely and obviously if they have Prime and things like that it comes pretty quick yeah sure um, so the URL is really long, but if you search for um, Pandora Stories sign up form in Google, I think it's the first search result. Otherwise, if you go over to the Pandora booth and tell them I sent you, um, they can probably hook you up right there as well. But yeah, Pandora Stories is available to everyone. And I know Megan has been a really good sport. So um, yeah, thank you all once again. Thanks for hanging around. Um, I'll be here till tomorrow and... Happy to help answer any questions you have. And that was my presentation at the CD Baby DIY Musician Conference recorded live in Austin, Texas. Thank you so much to Christina for giving me permission to upload this and share it with all of you. And thank you to the team for inviting me to come and speak. It was an absolute pleasure and it felt incredible to be back there after three years of not being able to do the conference in person. So thank you to everyone that attended in person or online and it was a pleasure to meet everyone there. And the, the comments and the feedback after were just overwhelming. Um, so this has been the Streamline podcast with Mike Warner. If you've enjoyed this, let me know. You could find me on social media at Ask Mike Warner. Now, if you happen to be listening on Spotify, my audiobook just came out on Spotify. So you can actually get the Work Hard Playlist Hard second edition audiobook. Purchase it directly within the Spotify app. Now, it's available in the US to begin with, but it will be available in other countries very soon. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.